Hello friends, welcome to the NIOS. I am Kaushal Kishore from Central University of South Bihar. Today the topic on which we are going to discuss upon is one of the most interesting topics of educational psychology and child development. The title of the today's topic is thinking and thinking skills need for development. The objective of today's session is to make the viewers familiarize about the concept of thinking and thinking skills, nature of thinking, types of thinking and need of thinking skills for the development of a child. It is expected that after completion of this session, the viewers will be able to recall the concept of thinking, compare various definitions of thinking given by different psychologists with different perspectives, differentiate between the process and product of thinking and give examples of both, explain about the nature of thinking, differentiate among various types of thinking, identify the types of thinking exhibited by a child in real life situations, reflect upon the need of thinking and thinking skills for the development of a child. Now we discuss about the concept of thinking. When we think about the concept of thinking or talk about the concept of thinking, it is a kind of mental process which is found in each and every living organism. When we talk about living organism, it includes animal as well as human beings. Obviously, the level of thinking, the types of thinking found in human beings is higher than the level of thinking found in animals. That is why they are distinguished especially in this world. Our daily routine works, most of our daily works involves a kind of thinking. For example, when I get up early in the morning and decide which shirt or which dress should I wear to go to the office, it involves thinking. When I decide which route should, which route should I take to reach the office so that I can avoid the traffic, it involves thinking. When I decide which work should I do on priority basis in my office, it involves thinking. Most of the things around us in our society are result of human beings thinking, for example, motor cars, aeroplanes, high rise buildings, etc. Obviously, there are some thinkings involve uh, few mental steps, some thinking involves uh, much more mental steps, some, think in some thinking processes we come across some familiar situations while in some situa thinking situations, we come across very new situations. Some thinking are directed towards some goal and some are not. Since thinking is such a multi-dimensional concept, so different psychologists or different experts have been tried, have tried to define this concept differently. For example, if we look at some definitions given by different psychologists, when Kagan and Haveman defined in 1976, they said that thinking can be described as the mental manipulation of images, symbols, concepts, rules and other mediation units. They are talking about this mental manipulation. Uh, however, in Valent uh, when Valentine in 1965 defined thinking, it was defined as an activity that consists essentially of a connected flow of ideas which are directed towards some end or purpose. It, is a, it involves a kind of purpose or it is always directed towards a purpose. Silverman in 1978 defined thinking is a process that enables us to find solutions to problems by using symbolic representation of stimuli and events. Here stimuli means a kind of problem which works as stimuli for us. Mohsen in 1967 defined thinking is an implicit problem solving behavior. Gilmar in 1970 defined thinking is a problem solving process in which we use ideas or symbols in place of overt activity. Gilmar talked about overt activity. If we look carefully on these different def definitions given by different experts, we come across to know that some definitions, the, all the definitions can be classified into two categories, one which are talking about the mental manipulation and another which are talking about a kind of problem solving. In these definitions, this, they are actually focusing around two concepts or two ideas in which one is talking about thinking as a process, whereas in other, another definitions, 
thinking is reflected as a product of as like problem solving. Uh, whatever dimension we take about uh, thinking, whether it is as a, as a process or whether it is a product, it is clear in both the cases that it is an overt, it is not an overt behavior, it is a covert behavior. And when we go through all these definitions, we come to understand about the nature of thinking, which is that thinking is a cognitive activity. When we talk about cognitive activity, it comes in our mind there are about those three domains we talk about cognitive domain, affective domain and psychomotor domain. So, thinking comes under the domain cognitive and it is a cognitive activity. Again, thinking is not overt. It is a mental exploration rather than motor exploration. It is always inside the mind, not it is not reflected through the uh, our motor activities. That may be and problem solving or any motor activity may be an outcome or product or the result of thinking, but when we talk about particularly the idea of thinking, it is a mental exploration, it is not covert, it is not overt sorry, it is covert. Thinking is always directed towards achieving some purpose. This again, uh, however, when we go ahead, we will come to know that there are different kinds of thinking out of them, some of, uh, some of them are without any goal, but most of the time uh, the thinking is directed towards achieving some purpose. Even some experts like Whitaker in 1970 said that all thinking is goal directed, nothing, no thinking is without goal. One more nature of thinking we come, come to know that thinking is a problem solving behavior. Again, uh, it is very important to note here that every problem solving behavior is not thinking, rather it is related only to the inner cognitive behavior. As I discussed just now that when we talk about any problem solving, that the product portion in which problem is solved and some motor activities are there, that particular behavior related to problem solving is not thinking. Rather, before that the process which went into our uh, mind, which worked in our mind, the inner cognitive behavior that is thinking. Humphrey in 1963 also uh, gave some characteristics or nature of thinking and uh, Humphrey said that thinking starts on appearance of a problem. When we come across uh, a problem, we find any problem, then we start thinking upon it. So, thinking the process of thinking starts. Humphrey also said that he thinking includes trial and error. Though when we go further, we will understand that each and every thinking or each and every level of thinking is uh, necessarily does not have trial and error. There are certain levels of thinking which include trial and error and there are certain levels of thinking which does not include trial and error, rather they include insightful learning. We will discuss just now about this. Humphrey also said that thinking uses languages. It is said that thinking is an internal speech. When we think about anything, we need a kind of language inter for internal speech of knowledge of language is required to think upon anything. Thinking uses symbols, images, images may be visual images or auditory images. Visual images, for example, if I saw something and I am uh, somewhere else and now I am thinking about that thing, so that kind of image is in my mind. And auditory image means when I was passing through some place and I heard about something, people was talking about this and now I am talking about that discussion, so auditory images are going on in my mind. So, these are the uh, nature, this is the nature which Humphrey described in 1963 regarding thinking. Now, we come to the types of thinking. Again, uh, since uh, we discussed in initial uh, time, initial session, initial portion of the today's session that thinking has many dimensions. Many experts, many psychologists has, have defined thinking in a different way. So, different psychologists have diff categorized thinking into different types. However, there is no contradiction among these classifications. They are rather supporting to each other. In this discussion, we are talking, we will talk about two kinds of uh, classification, two kinds of types of thinking which we have, which have given by different psychologists. First, we talk about the types of thinking given by Zimbardo and Rook in 1977. Zimbardo and Rook divided thinking into two categories, two major categories. One is autistic thinking 
and another is realistic thinking. According to Zimbardo and Rook, autistic thinking means it includes daydreaming, fantasy and delusions. Note here that daydreaming or fantasy are nothing seriously abnormal things. It is a kind of withdrawal defense mechanism. If you remember, uh, if, you are, if you recall the concept of adjustment, there are two kinds of adjustment. One is permanent adjustment and another is uh, which is not permanent adjustment which is called defense mechanism. In that defense mechanism there is a technique which is called withdrawal, a kind of daydreaming uh, or fantasy can may fall into the category of withdrawal in which we escape ourselves from some tense situation with the help of daydreaming and fantasy. If it is up to this level, this kind of autistic thinking is not seriously abnormal. But delusions and a person is regularly in delusions, then it is abnormal and it requires to take care. And another type which Zimbardo and Rook talked about in 1977 is realistic thinking. In realistic thinking, the Zimbardo, they further uh, divided this realistic thinking into three subcategories. One is convergent thinking that is deductive reasoning, another is creative thinking that is inductive, third one is evaluative thinking that is critical. Convergent thinking that is deductive, it is kind of uh, when we decide, when we think or conclude something with the help of major premise via minor premise and then we conclude. For example, if uh, a major premise we know that all human beings are mortal, x is a human being this is minor premise. So, we can conclude that x is also mortal this kind of deductive reasoning this is convergent thing, convergent thinking nothing new is created in this where rather which is a major the major premise which is already existing in this world with the help of that we conclude something. In creative thinking is it creates something new is inductive in nature. In what we do in inductive reasoning that we take different examples and with the help of n number of examples we reach to a generalization. For example, if uh, I had an observation that Mr. X uh, is a human being and he died after some time after completing his age. So, I uh, can say that Mr. X is mortal. Then I observed Mr. Y and again I found that Mr. Y is also mortal. Then I saw uh, another human being Mr. Z, he is also mortal. And I saw many human beings and found that they all are mortal. Then I can conclude that human beings are mortal. Then evaluative thinking Evaluative thinking is a kind of higher level of thinking which we also call critical thinking. In evaluative thinking, a kind of thinking involved in which person before deciding anything or before accepting anything thinks or evaluate the information whether the information is correct or not and then he or she decides to accept or reject the information. A many a very common example in today's scenario may be taken as social media example. in. For example, in WhatsApp, uh, many of time we come across uh, on our WhatsApp messages that uh, someone has forwarded a message that this is a very uh, seriously ill child and if you forward this message, the WhatsApp will donate so much amount to the parents of this child. One who has evaluative thinking or this critical thinking will decide whether it is possible to donate money by this mean, by this medium. And come a person with evaluative thinking will decide though it is not possible, it is a kind of fraud, it is a kind of hoax. So, he will not, he or she will not forward this message. However, a person without evaluative thinking will accept it as truth and forward it. So, uh, this is evaluative thinking which uh, Zimbard and Rook talked about under the domain of realistic thinking. One more classification we talked about and many other psychologists have given that is again they have classified divided thinking into two broader categories. One is non-directed or associative thinking that is uh, like uh, Zimbardo and Rooks this autistic thinking and the another type is directed thinking which is kind of realistic thinking. 
non directed or associative thinking is kind of autistic thinking in which uh, daydreaming uh, again Ill, uh, delusions or fantasizing is there it is without any purpose without any goal that's why it's called non directed whereas directed thinkings are always associated with some goals and the experts has classified or sub divided into five sub categories this directed thinking the one is perceptual or concrete thinking in which thinking is about concrete things available around us the this is the lower uh, level of thinking again the next level of thinking is abstract thinking or conceptual thinking in which a person is able to think about the abstract things the things which are not present in concrete form in front of him or her he or she is able to about think about the, that thing the next higher level is reflective thinking obviously this is the higher than the concrete or abstract thinking and uh, it has different characteristics reflective thinking that it is a higher form of thinking again reflective thinking aims at solving complex rather than simple problems reflective reflective thinking requires reorganizing all the relevant experiences and finding a new way the in reflective thinking a person with reflective thinking always try to reorganize which are the relevant experiences in a logical ma manner and try to find a new way instead of going for the uh, with the old way again as i discussed earlier in reflective thinking instead of trial and error a insightful cognitive approach is there in trial and error a kind of experimentation is going on while in reflective thinking a person thinks reorganize the things in a logical manner an insightful decision is taken by the person and then the step is taken that's why reflective reflective thinking is called an insightful cognitive approach the next level is uh, according to this classification is creative thinking which is considered as the uh, high level of thinking uh, in creative thinking the purpose is to create or construct something new original novel or unusual the persons with creative thinking don't think as the usual way of thinking by done by ordinarily ordinary people this kind of thinking is not restricted by any pre established rules an example of this kind of thinking is that thinking of scientists thinking of artists or inventors they when we think in a bilkul uh, in a totally different manner the next level uh, in this categorization is critical thinking the critical thinking is the kind of highest level of thinking in which a person keeps aside his or her own personal beliefs prejudices and opinions to sort out the facts and discover the truth to discover the truth in this kind of thinking the person tries to find out the truth and sort out the facts even at the cost of his or her personal belief system mangal in his book in 2002 wrote that if a person uh, want to think critically one resort to set of higher cognitive abilities and skills for the proper interpretation analysis evaluation and inference if a person want to think critically first thing he or she has to keep his personal beliefs prejudices aside then he or she must has some uh, sort of higher cognitive abilities again uh, mangal noted this point that an an ideal critical thinker is habitually inquisitive which is always in search of information well informed open minded open minded that whatever new will come i am ready to accept it is uh, again flexible uh, is also the flexibility is also there fair minded in evaluation free from personal biases and prejudices honest in seeking relevant information and willing to reconsider if a person is a critical thinker he or she is always ready to reconsider the things that may be in uh, at the cost of his own uh, or her personal belief system but the truth is truth a critical thinker always accept the truth irrespective of his personal thinking or personal uh, prejudices what is the need of these thinking skills for the development of a child when we talk about uh, child development or education for child development we know that the, that the purpose of education is to develop is to provide holistic development to a child 
which ultimately can be grown up as a suitable or adjusting citizen in the society. When we talk about good citizens in the society, we need a kind of citizens which are always critical in thinking, which do not think in keeping their beliefs or prejudices in mind. They need to think critically. If we want to develop a child into a good citizen or into a holistically developed person, uh, development of thinking skills and particularly development of higher thinking skills is required. Uh, in today's session, uh, we talked about concept of thinking, nature of thinking, types of thinking, need of thinking skills for development of a child. Now, uh, after completing this session, you must ask some questions from yourself that which kind of thinking is dominating in your behavior, which kind of thinking is needed more for better development of a child. As a teacher, what can you do to promote higher level of thinking in your students? Obviously, uh, as a teacher, it's always promoting higher levels of thinking is always good uh, for the future learners or future citizens of the country. I hope that uh, today's session uh, must have been helpful in understanding the concept of thinking and thinking skills for you. Uh, thank you for patient listening. We will meet in the next session with some new topic. Thank you. Thank you very much.